Hello mech warriors, and welcome back to the mech lab, where we try to be a better mech commander every day. I covered a lot of terrible weapons in my previous video, but I got so many comments about other terrible weapons that I decided that I needed to do another video. So today we'll be covering even more terrible weapons that you should avoid. Our first weapon is the battle mech flail. It's not particularly heavy or bulky for a melee weapon, weighing only 5 tons no matter the size of the mech, which is atypical. Most melee weapons, like the hatchet, scale up in size and weight depending on the weight of the mech, but they also increase their damage. Unlike most melee weapons, the flail does none of this. It always does 9 points of damage, but it suffers a plus 1 to hit, and if you roll double 1s on the to hit roll, the flail hits your mech instead for 5 damage, and causes a piloting skill roll to not fall down, similar to a missed kick. All of this combines to make the flail sort of a meme weapon. You can make it work on a light mech build as a nasty 9 damage melee surprise, just ensure that that mech has very good piloting to make this weapon worth its weight. Our next weapon is so obscure that it's not even listed in Mega Mech Lab, so I'll just take this snippet from Sarna and explain why this thing is so terrible. The Centurion is an EMP weapon meant to shut down units, but unless you are susceptible to it, it has the range of a small laser. There is a long list of things that make you susceptible to the Centurion weapon system, including being a primitive unit, having commercial or industrial armor, currently suffering from a sensor crit, or if the unit you're firing at is older than 150 years. I suppose all of those mothballed mechs held by Comstar would probably count in this case. On a successful hit against a battle mech, the enemy player must roll a shutdown check as if their mech was at 14 heat. This means that the enemy player has a 91% chance of success on such a roll meaning that your chances of pulling off a shutdown are extremely low. However, I will say that vehicles and battle armor have a very good chance of being shut down on a 4+, but unless that is a primitive vehicle, you need to get right up next to it in order to hit the thing. And weighing in at 5 tons and producing 4 heat, and having a massive battle value of 750, the Centurion weapon system is simply not worth taking. Next, we have ER Pulse Lasers. The these are clan pulse lasers that have an increase to their range. The ER Large Pulse Laser, for example, now has ranges similar to a Gauss Rifle, but still only deals 10 damage. However, it produces 3 more heat than a standard Clan Large Pulse Laser, and critically, instead of a minus 2 to hit, it only has a minus 1 to hit, and costs more battle value. Similarly, the ER Medium Pulse Laser does not have a meaningful increase in range to offset the increased heat, increased battle value, and loss of hit bonus. Overall, there is no reason to ever take ER pulse lasers, in my opinion. Next up, we have one-shot weapons. These are one-shot versions of standard weapons. They can only be fired once, and then their ammo is depleted. Looking at the Inner Sphere LRM-5 one-shot, it weighs almost the same as a standard LRM-5 with one ton of ammo. Similarly, the one-shot SRMs, Streak SRMs, etc. all have the same problem. They're extremely bulky, and while they are cheap on battle value, it's pretty much always worth it to just take the entire weapon with some ammunition, especially if you're able to take a couple of them. I do note, however, that improved one-shot weapons are significantly better. In particular, the Clan Streak SRM-4 improved one-shot version is quite cheap on battle value and doesn't waste its ammo when it's fired if it misses. That's pretty decent bang for buck, and if you compare the two, you can see that it actually weighs a little bit less than a standard Streak SRM-4. If you just need a last line of defense type weapon, or if you're just looking for a big surprise that you can pack onto a light mech, the improved one-shot streak SRM is not a bad take. I will note that rocket launchers are also quite decent. They do suffer a plus one to hit, similar to MRMs, but in my opinion, taking a whole bunch of rocket launcher 10s will always be better than taking an MRM launcher. It fights at roughly the same range as a large laser. Next up, we have the Heavy Flamer, a weapon with very slightly increased range over a standard flamer, weighing half again as much, and also requires 
firing ammo. Explosive ammo, I might add, which does 5 damage per remaining round. The ammo comes 10 to a ton, and means that a single heavy flamer weighs almost 3 times as much as a standard flamer. However, it does deal a significant amount of damage to infantry, 6d6, which is kind of overkill for anything less than a very large platoon. I've heard people deride the ER flamer similarly for the greatly increased heat that it produces. However, I actually quite like the ER flamer. Infantry typically has very short range weapons, meaning that if you can engage them at range 5, it keeps your mech much safer. The greatly increased heat is offset pretty well by double heat sinks. If you're making a dedicated anti-infantry mech, I think the ER flamer is fairly decent. Let me know if you disagree in the comments down below. And while you're down there, why not leave a like and subscribe to the channel? It really helps me out. Next up, we have a weapon that I think is derided a little bit unfairly. The binary laser cannon has the same range as a large laser, produces as much heat as two inner sphere large lasers, and costs almost double the battle value, and almost twice the tonnage. However, while it doesn't deal the 16 damage that you would expect out of two large lasers, it does deal 12 damage, making it one of the few head cappers in the era that it was introduced. It was later replaced by the bombast laser, which is much lighter and can still deal 12 damage. However, it does so at a significant cost of plus three to hit. Normally, this weapon only deals seven damage. Overall, for their cost and extreme heat, these two weapons are fairly underwhelming. But if you're looking for an energy head capper in earlier eras, the blazer cannon is your only option. Next up, we have the chain whip, which is just a really weird weapon. It has far too many confusing rules associated with it to make it something that I would ever want to play at the table. Battletech already has enough pouring over tables that I don't want a melee weapon slowing down the game even further. While the whip can do some interesting things, like pulling on a mech's leg to cause it to fall, it doesn't deal much direct damage itself. And I would typically rather have a weapon that deals damage on its own. If anyone's had success with chain whips, again, leave a comment and let me know your fantastic strategy for this highly unorthodox weapon. Next up, we have the booby trap. This is quite literally a mech self-destruct system and can be extremely nasty if you get right up next to an enemy. I think it would be pretty hilarious to stick this on an Ost Scout and have it run up behind an enemy and explode itself. This thing deals damage based on engine size. So the 280 rated engine in an Ost Scout would deal 140 damage to a mech adjacent to it. That is pretty devastating, but your mech blows up to do it. I think it would be pretty funny to run a bunch of kamikaze mechs, but I don't know if it would actually be very effective. How many of these did you know about? My commenters are the ones that informed me about a few of these, such as this terrible piece of junk. Be sure to check out my other terrible weapons video, and let me know if I missed any really horrendous weapons, or other pieces of Battletech equipment that should never see the light of day. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to help out the channel. Thanks so much for watching, Mech Warriors, and have a great day.